Hello and welcome to another edition of Tiger TV. I'm your host, Zachary Johnson. It's been a long winter, but the arrival of spring has brought a new sense of optimism here at Taunton High School. It's an exciting time to be a Tiger with so much going on in the building. In fact, one of the areas of the building that impacts our future Tigers is making some exciting changes. Neil Ladino has more on what is happening with our acclaimed Tiger Tots program. Thanks, Zach. I'm here at A House First Floor, where Taunton High's child care program is located. This program involves the tiniest Tigers here at THS. And lucky for all of you, I'm not talking about the Ochos. Let's see what this program has in store. The child care program has three levels. Each level offers the THS students hands-on learning experiences with the preschoolers. So currently, as our program is right now, um, child care two comes in and they pick up all the children around the school, grab children from the cars, and then um, they'll play with them in the morning. Child Care 3 then comes in for double blocks and they're responsible for teaching them and um, implementing all the curriculum that they've written. As a Child Care 3 student, our weeks alternate. One week we're in the preschool with the Tiger Tots and the other week we are at placement and I go to Chamberlain to student teach. Although the program is growing in popularity, that isn't the only reason why they are looking to expand. We are looking to expand because it's a very popular program at the high school, so there's high student demand. But also we're looking to increase those opportunities for students to learn more about working with children because there are so many opportunities in preschool. Another reason for expanding is for us to be able to have the opportunity to filter more of the high school students through the different classrooms. So in other words, we would be able to rotate them through and more students would have the opportunity to go in the preschool prior to becoming a junior or a senior. As we expand, we're looking to increase the amount of time that the high school students spend with the children from about 150 hours to about 750 hours. So it's really going to increase their practical time with the children, both in-house here at Tiger Tots as well as in the elementary schools at Triumph Head Start, wherever they go out on placements. Childcare offers a learning experience unlike any other to the THS students that will benefit them for years to come. I learn about childhood development and how to create a positive learning environment in the preschool. Each week a different senior student gets to create their own lesson plan and teach it to the kids. My favorite part of being in the program is just seeing the kids every day and getting to create a relationship with them. Um, I would say I enjoy building connections with the kids and seeing smiles on their faces. This year, a new addition to the child care program is a playground. Both the staff and the Tiger Tots are patiently awaiting to incorporate it into their daily routine. We are super excited about the playground. As you can see, we're almost there. We have been wanting a playground for many years, um, back to Mrs. Shimori years, and we're finally getting one. It's hugely important for our preschoolers to have this opportunity to work, to play outside. They learn all kinds of skills, social skills, patience, empathy, all those things that are hugely important to the development of the children. The children are so thrilled. Um, every day they get to see what has kind of improved. They got to watch the cement trucks dump everything in. They loved that process. They've really been interested in each day. They point out whatever is new, whatever has happened while they weren't here. And um, in general, just getting the children outside, teaching our high school students how important physical activity is for children, um, how it decreases behavioral concerns that you may have with children. The more children move, the more active they are, the more well-rounded they are. As you can see, the preschools here are in such wonderful hands with all the amazing students and staff involved. We look forward to seeing the program's growth, continued success, and future. For Tiger TV, I'm Neely Ladino. Back to you in the studio, Zach. Thank you, Neely. It is great to see and hear about all of these fantastic changes that are being implemented for these kids. That playground should provide a lot of fun for the youngest members of Tiger Nation. Attention all juniors, this year's junior prom is set for May 2nd at the Venus de Milo in Swansea. Permission slips are now available and tickets can be purchased online. The link to purchase tickets can be found on the THS website homepage. Tickets cost $100 and the last day to purchase is Friday, April 12th. On May 20th, Taunton High School's art department will be hosting their annual art show from 6 to 8 p.m. This event will showcase the work of THS students. They have been working hard all year to create amazing drawings, portraits, and sculptures. The art show will take place in the Taunton High School Library and refreshments will be provided. Mark your calendars and come support your fellow classmates. As you may recall, 
Last month, THS celebrated World Language and Diversity Week. One of the clubs that assisted with activities during that week was the French Club. Our very own Jacob McGrath takes a closer look at what this club is all about. Jacob? Hey Tigers, here at Ton High we have a lot of clubs, such as DECA, Interact, and Key Club, but today we're focusing on a lesser known one, the French Club. While Madame Surhall began teaching French at Ton High this year, she has a long history of teaching and speaking multiple languages, including French and Arabic. Oh, I started learning French when I was like Arabic. In Lebanon, we learn the two languages, Arabic and French, and uh, once we are at school, we speak French and Arabic. I've been taking French for two years. I took it in seventh grade, and then this is my second year taking it. I've only been taking French. This is my first year taking it, but I've known a little bit from the past. What does French Club involve, and why did you join? It's uh, being outside the, the classroom. It's let the students learn about the French culture. I joined French because I found it very interesting, and I thought that it would be a fun experience to enjoy. I joined French because ever since I was little, my brothers liked it, kind of got me into it, and it's just really interesting, and the language is fun. Although Madame Sirhal always creates a welcoming environment and atmosphere for the club, each member has their own personal interest in the French culture. I enjoy most of my French culture. I enjoy the culture because, because of people like Victor and Minyama and the city of Paris and things like the Eiffel Tower. Architecture is really nice and the people. I like the culture because it's very interesting. I like learning about other people's cultures. Uh, the love of learning, to be open, and uh, being able to uh, discover new uh, way of thinking, new, new ways of thinking, and uh, have the student uh, watch the students uh, loving, loving uh, to learn about this culture and how rich it is. Well, as a member myself, I hope to see you guys there. It's a great club, but I've been a member for the last two years. Back to you, Zach. Thank you, Jacob. There are so many great opportunities for our students here at Ton High School, and we encourage everyone to pursue after-school clubs and activities. Although the calendar now says April, Ava Alves is still all in on March Madness. As she reviews some basketball-themed films, today's edition of Ava's Real Recommendations. Take it away, Ava. Thanks, Zach. The NCAA men's and women's basketball tournaments have taken over the past month. To honor the madness, I will be recommending two movies that celebrate the game of basketball. Let's get right into it. Released in 2000, Love and Basketball isn't just a regular sports movie. It's a love story that is intertwined with the world of basketball. The film follows the journey of Monica Wright, played by Santa Lathan, and Quincy McCall, played by Omar Epps, as they navigate their relationship and passion for basketball from childhood to adulthood. From their early days playing basketball on their neighborhood court to their high school and college careers, Monica and Quincy's bond is tested by the pressures of competition, personal ambition, and the challenges of growing up. As they navigate through the ups and downs of life, basketball remains a constant presence, shaping their dreams in unexpected ways. Monica is a talented and ambitious athlete, determined to break barriers in a male-dominated sport, while her friend and rival, Quincy, is a promising player who has to navigate the pressures of family expectations and personal aspirations. With its blend of romance and basketball, the film remains a classic sports drama that has resonated with audiences of all ages. The 2005 film, Coach Carter, takes audiences on a gripping journey led by Samuel L. Jackson in the powerful role of Coach Ken Carter. Inspired by true events, the film centers on Coach Carter's transformative impact on a struggling high school basketball team. In addition to trying to win games, Coach Carter also puts an emphasis on instilling integrity academic excellence, and modesty in his players. The sports drama also stars supporting roles by a talented ensemble cast, including Rob Brown, Rick Gonzalez, Ashanti, Shannon Tatum, and many more. If you're looking for more basketball excitement, in addition to the NCAA tournament, I highly recommend watching these films if you haven't seen them. I'm Ava Alves. See you next time on the next episode of Tiger TV. Back to you, Zach. Thank you, Ava. That was another informative film segment. We're gonna take a brief commercial break but please stay with us as we'll be right back with some more exciting THS news.
Welcome back. A few weeks ago, Taunton High School senior class embraced the madness and hosted a 3 on 3 March Madness basketball tournament fundraiser. There were many teams that competed, including a variety of student teams and faculty teams. When it was all said and done, the team of Dre Felker, Brett McNamara, and Kane Felker prevailed in the championship game and secured their medals. Congratulations to all who participated and thank you to everyone who made this event happen. Speaking of sports, as the weather heats up, so do our spring sports. The Rundown crew previews the upcoming athletic season and takes a look at many student athletes whose names you will hear a lot of this coming season. Take it away, guys. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of Tiger TV's The Rundown, where we always end up in the end zone. Alongside Matt Clayman, I'm David Gildred. Now that winter sports have come to an end, it's time to look ahead to our spring sports. That's right, David. In today's edition, we'll be covering a few players to watch on each of our spring sports teams here at Taunton High School. Expectations are always high, so let's see what THS student athletes can help their teams this season. The first athlete we take a look at is Grace Inasio, a senior captain on the girls track and field team. Last year, she ran a 12.8 second 100 meter dash, along with a 7.68 second 55 meter dash and a 42.8 second 300 meter dash. Inasio finished with a time of 7.69 seconds in the 55 meter dash, which earned her a 9th place finish in the Winter Hockamock League meets. She looks to improve on prior seasons and beat her personal records. Next up, we focus on Ansel Alexander, a senior who competes in the shot put event on the boys track and field team. Alexander finished in first place at the Winter Hockamock League meets, recording a throw of 47 feet and 9 inches. He hopes to qualify for states and become a Hockamock League All-Star this season. As we head out to the baseball diamond, we take a look at junior catcher Cameron Dorr. Last season, Dorr was the starting catcher for the JV team and was called up to the varsity team for the MIAA state tournament. He looks to be a key contributor for the Tigers this season as they look to compete for another state championship. As we transition over to the softball field, we have junior Burke Aldrich. The shortstop has been on the team since her 8th grade year and has helped them win an astonishing three consecutive state championships. She batted six in the lineup last year and will be a key offensive piece again this season for coach Michelle Raposo. Aldrich and the Tigers have their sights set on an unprecedented fourth straight state championship title. Out on the tennis courts is where we'll find Janelle Garcia, who has been a starter since her freshman year. She has played first doubles for the past three seasons, helping the team advance to the MIA playoffs in 2023. Garcia has been impactful on and off the court, as she is a teammate that underclassmen can always look up to for advice. Speaking of underclassmen, sophomore Rowan Kimmer is expected to have a massive role for the boys' tennis team. Kimmer will play first singles this season, jumping all the way up from second doubles as a freshman last season to play at the top of the boys' lineup. He looks to continue improving and help lead the boys' tennis team to an MIAA playoff appearance. Next up, we have boys lacrosse and Kevin Arujo. The junior defenseman begins his third year as a varsity starter, where he is a face-off specialist for the Tigers. Last year, he had an impressive 62% face-off win rate and also chipped in with three goals and nine assists. Arujo looks to improve on his impressive 2023 campaign and help lead the team to even more success this season. As we shift to girls lacrosse, we find junior captain Madison Zela. The three-year varsity starter was the leading scorer for the Tigers in 2023, tallying up 67 points. Zayla looks to continue to impress on the field with yet another big year. Our final athlete we are going to talk about today is boys volleyball junior Travis Johnson. As a sophomore, Johnson played both opposite and outside hitter, leading to 14 aces and 17 kills for his JV squad. He looks to improve on a great 2023 season and hopefully lead the Tigers to an MIAA state tournament playoff appearance. As you can see, there's a ton of student athletes that are looking to excel in their respective sports this spring. Absolutely, David. I'm looking forward to another exciting season. Well, that's going to wrap things up for this edition of The Rundown. For Tiger TV, I'm David Gildred. And I'm Matt Clayman. Back to you in the studio, Zach. Thanks, guys. I'm very excited to see how our spring teams will do this year. Hopefully, they can continue the incredible success that we have seen so much of over the past few years. Now let's run into the hallways where we will find Dwayne Burgo and Jose Torn asking some more hard-hitting questions to our students and staff to find out just what they're thinking. Take it away, guys. Thanks, Zach. Welcome back to another edition of Tiger Talk, where we're asking a rather interesting question. We will be seeing what staff and students' last meal would be. Let's get into it. Uh, I'll have like a whole seafood boil, like lobster, crabs, corn, 
Probably have to do like a Thanksgiving dinner with all of the, the trimmings, the, the turkey, squash, stuffing, all that good stuff. I think my last meal would have to be my husband's chicken salt sambuca because it is just the best. It'd probably be like Thanksgiving dinner with sugar cookies and like chipotle and stuff. If you could have one last meal, what would it be and what? Uh, probably some Popeyes. I need me a juicy chicken sandwich, uh, some mac and cheese, preferably baked mac and cheese. Uh, I also need myself some lemonade. Um, if I were to have something else, probably some watermelon Kool-Aid, gotta have that. But yeah, that'd probably be my last meal. Um, something good to go out with the bang, so. Probably chicken parm. It's boring, but it's really good. <laughs> Um, it would be shrimp alfredo because it's my favorite meal for my grandma. My last meal, um, it'd be a steak, T-bone, tenderloin, baked macaroni and cheese, my grandma's, and my mom's candy yams, brown sugar with pineapples. I'd probably do it in Todd's spaghetti. If you could have one last meal, what would it be and why? Probably pepperoni pizza, and yeah. Uh, a nice grilled ribeye on the grill outside. Uh, it's my favorite cut of meat, and if you season it just right, cook it just right, it tastes perfect. So that would be my favorite meal, my last meal. Um, a 10-piece chicken nugget meal from Chick-fil-A with fries and a large Dr. Pepper. And a 10-piece chicken nugget and a large fry from Wendy's with Dr. Pepper. I got one last meal. I would have some good big mac and cheese. I always love Big Mac and cheese, so you can never go wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? It's so good. My last meal would be a Cajun seafood boil because uh, it's just good, like, I know I'm big, so. Um, my last meal would be Big Mac and cheese. If I could have one last meal, it would be a fried seafood platter because I butter love seafood. Some rather interesting answers there. Wouldn't you agree, Jose? Definitely. I wasn't expecting some of the answers we got. Me, personally, I think I'd have to go with a country fried steak. What about you? I'd have to go with the beef ribs. What about you, Zach? Those were some great answers. I would have to say chicken parm is a staple for me. Well, that's going to wrap things up here on this episode of Tiger TV. Thank you for tuning in, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and all our social media pages to stay updated on the latest news. Good luck to everyone as we head into the fourth term. For our entire Tiger TV crew, I'm Zachary Johnson. We will see you next time, right here on Tiger TV.